Bob, what did you learn of Fremantle and Anzac Day? Um, well, it was a long time ago and probably the sides have changed, but uh, they came out really hard and they really um, played some good footy and probably deserved to win in the end and unlu unlucky not to. You're, prob you're pretty scathing about their tagging tactics then, though. Do you still feel that way? That they, and do you expect a bit of that again? Uh, no idea. Um, um, uh, no, I've got no idea what's going to happen and how they go about tagging Gary or Selwood or whatever they want to do. If they brought out what they brought out last time, what would the response from your bloke be? Ah, oh, well, we'll just play football and you'd hope the umpires would fix it up. Yeah, and do you find that has happened since then? Because I think that was a bit of a line in the sand when you made those comments after. Yeah, I think they have. I think they're, uh, even last week in our game, there was probably five or six free kicks paid at, at stop plays for, for guys hanging on. And I think it's a, the right thing to do. Mm. Mm. And the um, Nathan Ablett, can you tell us about him and where he's at? And there's obviously some speculation he's going to play again fairly shortly. Is that your expectation? Uh, we have no expectation when he's going to play. We know that he turned up and trained last night and that he was at the club this morning and we don't know how fit he is, whether he tends to play. And what I probably could say, that there's probably no chance of him playing in the AFL this year. So we shouldn't get our hopes up, you know, as, as media people, you know, coaches and supporters. And um, he... he I don't think there's a, any chance he'll play AFL this year for Geelong. Mm. Did it surprise you? He's been turning up as, as he has the last couple of days? No, no, really, because he's been, you hear around the traps that he's he's doing a bit of training and, and we always thought that he would come back and it's great that we've given him time and we've let him make the decision. We haven't put any pressure on him and you know, I think we're all pretty happy that he has made that decision. And you're pretty happy the way Lonigan and Hawkins are coming along too. You're sort of backing them in over him at this stage, obviously, by the Talking about. We've had no choice, yeah. <laughs> and um, we probably still won't have a choice. Uh, I think that uh, the development and the way that Hawkins and Lonigan have been going, it's been fantastic. And you know, all along the club was going to survive without Nathan. Uh, we're pleased and happy that he's decided to, you know, see whether he's still got what it takes to play. Fremantle statistically held you up from playing that play on footy last time. I think probably mm. more than any other game this year. Did, was that a mm. surprise to you? And was that something that you actually noticed? Yeah, that you know. But again, you know, every week's different. Uh, Collingwood did it probably better than Fremantle, and uh, there's been other sides that have tried to do it but haven't. So, depending on depends on what you know, what game Fremantle brings to the table and, and how we play as well. So, every week's different. You know, we hope that we can play, you know, like we played last week against Adelaide, but nothing's guaranteed in this game. What do you make of Fremantle? Obviously, no Peter Bell now, but uh, and do you think there'll be much of a response to that from them? And what do you make of them generally? I have no idea. Um, Look, I just don't make too many opinions on other clubs, and it's you know you can only get yourself into trouble. So uh, you know we we know that we've got a game this week. We're playing at home, and it's be cold, wet, icy conditions, and we uh, we don't mind it. Mm. What about the test for you, you Ruckman? Sandlands is in pretty good nick. Yeah, he is. Um, you know, but Ottens has now played four games, and and uh, we've got a good combination. Probably our our, our A grade team of Ruckman with Ottens and Blake. So. Uh, you know, we just they've just got to get used to working together, and we've got to improve. You know, the the, the relationship between the ruckman and the uh, and the small blokes underneath, and become more effective at, at stop plays. Do you mm. nearly just concede the tap to a ruckman like Sandlands, or do you? Uh, you know, he's going to get a percentage, and you probably have an element where you you rove to where he, you think he's going to hit the ball, but you should, certainly got to back your guys in too, and and uh, help back Otto in to get at least one hit out. Mm. Do you, was you play on game? Back a bit there. Was your play on game last week as, as good or can it get better than that? It was pretty slick last week. Oh, it was pretty good. Yeah, and um, you know, that's it's pretty hard to do against Adelaide at the home ground and you know, we made a big effort to try and do it and the boys did it um, as well as we could possibly have asked for. So we we're very pleased with uh, the way we did that element of our game last week. But again, it's a different week, we've got to do it again. Two hundred games as a coach bomber, two hundred and two games as a player. Do the milestones mean anything to you, or is it just something to look back on? No, nah, it means nothing really. Um, you know, we uh, just got to coach and prepare the same way, and the milestone means very little. And it's not about coaching really. It's, it's this game should all be about just the players, I reckon, the ones who put on the show. You know, the coaches don't put on the show. We uh, we just prepare the team, and they're the ones that uh, should get all their recognition. Yeah.